So, as, as you're going to see today and on Thursday, um, one of the more fundamental ideas that we're going to end with is this notion of uh, the Bellman equation, which is a way to solve um, control problems that have uh, a condition where you're going to generate actions that are going to depend on the current state that you're at, keeping in mind that you're trying to optimize some goal. So you're going to have some long-term goal. You're going to find yourself at some current state. And given that you're at this state and your long-term goal, what's the best action to do? This is called feedback control with an optimal policy. And the Bellman equation is a way to solve these, equation, these, these problems. And as we will see, the Bellman equation incorporates the Kalman filter, which is a way to estimate your state and then find a way to you know, perform the optimal action in order to optimize, to maximize some long-term goal. And um, so I, this weekend, I spent time writing your, um, your exam. And, uh, and I gave it to Esan. And, and then I was thinking about how, um, whether that's the best way to go versus giving you a project. Which way would you learn the most from what, what this task, you know, our course has been about? And, and so I decided that um, my goal is for you guys to learn the most possible, which I think you're going to learn more if you actually, the same way you do your homework and you learn something from it, I think you're going to learn more if you do a project. So I'm going to, so sounds like you're happy about that at least most <laughs> All right, so we're gonna, I'm going to give you a project where you're going to do um, optimal control, where you're going to put together all of these concepts that we've been, we've been talking about in class. And I think you're going to learn most from that. All right, so um, you have a homework for today, homework for Thursday. And then, so that will be due on next Tuesday. Um, and and the, uh, we'll, we'll probably email the project this weekend, and it'll be due, I don't know, probably in 10 days or something like that. So you'll have some time, some time to do it. It'll give you an opportunity to incorporate um, many of the ideas into a sort of a big problem, and you'll have all the time to do it. So originally, when I had put together the test, I had thought about making it a take-home test. So you wouldn't even have to come here. Um, but it's the problems are not as deep as, as a, in a single project, and I think you'll learn more from a single project. Does that sound okay? Yeah. All right. So okay, let, let's let's talk about feedback control policies. And so, you know, in my euphemism, it's the story of wanting to um, retire in Cleveland, and you find yourself here in residence class today. What's the best thing you can do today in order to achieve your goal of retiring in Cleveland, where LeBron James is playing great basketball, and you want to see it before he, he leaves? So there's some time commitment there as well. All right, so um, let's see if I can improve my posture here. All right, so um, let, let's go over our, our, our basic problem. So first we have a cost to, in this case, minimize. And um, that cost looks like that, look, look, looks like the following. So there's some, act, some motor commands that you're going to give, and those commands are going to cost you something. And um, you're going to have some cost in terms of where you're trying to go, there's some, at some time point P, you want to be at some goal. And so we're going to have a cost like this. And I, I didn't put the subscripts here. I'll put them down below here. So some commands you're going to generate, U sub I, at each time point and you want to be at some time point P at some location, and you want to know what's the best commands you can generate in order to do that. Well, the, these commands that you generate cause changes, and, and they, they, you have some dynamics in your system. And those dynamics are as follows.
So we have a state estimator. And the state estimator tells you where you are at any one time, at any given time, based on the measurement that you make and the prior belief that you have. So you have some estimate of where you are based on your prior belief. Where y hat, in this case, is c times x hat of n, n minus 1. And we have our common gain, which is our uncertainty times the um, uh, weighted by the measurement noise, which is c And we have a technique for describing also our uncertainty, and given these guys, we can estimate our state on the next trial, a uh, prior. and also update our uncertainty. OK. So that's our state estimator. Now, our policy that we're search searching for, our feedback control policy, says that what is the command that I need to generate at time point n? as some function of my estimate of where I am. So this is what we're after, is this function. And today I'm going to um, give you a couple of examples. First, we're going to solve it for our linear dynamical system. And then I'll, I'll solve it for a game, where it's like a um, board game, where there's some positions on the on the, on the board, and you have some costs associated with those positions, and you want to know what the optimal policy is. So we'll solve it for that. Both ways, we'll solve it using the Bellman equation, so you can get familiar with what, what that equation is. All right, so that's our problem. So before I start, do you have any questions? What are we trying to do? Yeah? I have a general question about the dynamics. Yeah. How general can it be, or how applicable to like real-life situation that x equals to ax um, you mean, so for example, you could have nonlinear dynamics. So that's linear dynamics, right? That's the class of problems that we've been solving. In nonlinear dynamics, you would have some, you know, like, like, like robotics, where states and change in states are nonlinear equations. So in that case, what one does is that you can solve the problem using, you know, basically a linearization of the nonlinear system. So you solve it over some domain. You say, over this range, things are linear. This is how I'm going to solve it. But you still can use the common, common filter for it. OK. And you know, with, with digital computers, it's easy to, to linear. Yeah. So um, in, in, in this case, um, you have a prior belief. And at that instant, you haven't measured anything yet. So you get to state n, time point n. You have to do something, right? You have to generate a command. Once you generate a command, the state changes, and you make a measurement. So we imagine that we get to state n, and we have to do something. And we don't have any measurement yet. OK. So um, our, the kinds of problems that we're going to be looking at, they often have something called cost per unit of time. And so if you look at our cost function up here, at each unit of time, you have u transpose l u plus at the final unit of time, you have this, this cost on the right. So in general, 
we can have something cost, called cost per unit of time. I'm going to write it as alpha at time point k. And it, it could be something like this. So this cost says every time point, if you perform some action, it's going to cost you something. And if you're at some state, it's going to cost you something. And so this, this T matrix here may be you know, zero except the last time point, or it could be some cost that depends on time. It's a general way to write our cost. And so you know, basically our objective is that by the time we get to the end of our time, time point P, we want this sum of these costs per time to be as small as possible. So the kinds of problems we're going to be looking at are called finite horizon. What that means is that there's a time point P is the end of the end of the problem. So we want to sum up this cost until time point P and find the policy, U, that gives us the smallest cost possible. And so it's called finite horizon. So time is specified for us. And we want to find, basically, this policy. Which we call U at time point K is some function of X at time point K. And that's our policy what I called F up above. And if it's optimum, if our policy is optimum, then this pi star, the optimum policy, is the one that minimizes the commands U that sum from time point 0 to time point P of our cost per step. So this is what we're after, pi star, which is basically a way to ask, what should I do at time point k if I find myself at position x? And a policy has to give you an answer for all states, so no matter where you are. So imagine the world as being a seat in, in, this, in this room. You could be sitting anywhere. And when you find yourself at a given place at a given time, what's the best action to do? That's what the policy is. And one has to compute this from the very beginning. So you have to have a policy in place that says no matter where I go, no matter what time I find myself at that location, I know what the best thing to do in order to optimize this cost that you gave me. OK, so that's, that's a, it's, it's, like, it's like knowing what to do no matter where you are, no matter what time you find yourself at that location given that final cost. And that's, that's the problem that we want to solve. So it's kind of an astonishing thing that we can do that, right? It, I mean, to me, it's like the kind of stuff your parents would teach you. They want to give you good value, so no matter where you are, with who you are, you can do the best thing. And that's what the optimum policy is. Mathematically, we're going to do the same thing. So let's see if we can figure it out. So in general, to solve these problems, we begin at the end. We say, Suppose that you are at the end of time, time point P. What is the best thing to do if you're there at that time at some location? What's the best action? Let's solve that problem first. Once we solve it for that time point P, then say, what's the best thing to do at time point P minus 1? And so we will unfold the problem from the end to the beginning. So in general, to solve these problems, we start at last time point P. So, okay, here's our cost per step. So it says that if you generate some command, it's going to cost you. And if you are at some state, it's going to cost you. So, well, 
what's the best thing that I can do if I get to the last time point? Well, the, if I'm at the last time point, then it doesn't matter what commands I generate because I'm run out of time. It's not gonna change my state that's gonna make any difference. So at the last time point, the best thing to do, pi star, at the last time point, x, no matter where it is, at time point p, the best thing to do is to do nothing. Why? Because any action that you do is going to change your state, but you run out of time. So it doesn't matter. So you should just do nothing if this is your cost per step. So if you did that, if so, if this is what you did, then we have a function that we call a value function, v. This is the value of your policy, so if, which is basically the cost that you incurred. V, under the optimum policy, which is in this case do nothing, at time point x of p, is just going to be the cost that you incurred. Well, you didn't cost in, in, incur any cost for the commands you generated. You just have this. So you have x of p transpose t of p x of p. So that's your value. That's the value of your state, x of p, under the action of doing nothing, which is just this. Essentially, is the cost that you incur. So as we solve our problem, what we're going to see is that at every time point, this value function is going to give us the cost from now till the end of time p, if you were optimal. So it's basically telling you that at time point n, if you find yourself at this location, what is the value of this location if you were to produce the very best commands that are possible from now on? And that's called a value function. And what, what's important about it is that it's a way to keep track of the costs to go. From here on, what is the best scenario that could potentially play out if I go from now on with the optimum policy. And this is called a value function. So let's, let's write down what that means. It said value function for our policy, which basically assigns a value to each state in this case, at time point P. Essentially, it is the cost of being at a state. In this case, the minimum cost, the best cost of being at a given state. Best cost in the sense that this is as good as it can be if you were to do the optimal thing. All right, so let's now look at time point p minus 1. One step back. You are at state x at p minus 1. We want to know what is the best action. So we have a cost per step, alpha, at time point p minus 1. That's equal to the command that you give plus the state that you're at. So if this is the cost of being in that state and producing this action, well, where is the state um, going to take you if you produce this action? It's going to take you to some, some other state, right? So if you're at state x of p minus 1 and you produce some command u of p minus 1, you're going to go to some new state, right? Which in this case is going to be ax times p minus 1 plus bu of p minus 1 plus some epsilon x. And that's going to take you to x at time point p some state p. So 
if you were at this state and generated this command, it's going to take you to some new state. This new state is going to have a value. Right? It's going to have some value. You start it with some cost, alpha. So the idea is that the value at the state x of p minus 1, if you did action u of p minus 1, is this cost per step plus this value of the state p given that you were at state p minus 1 and you performed the action u p minus 1. So value of where you go this is cost per step and this is value of the destination I'm sorry this is value of where you are not where you go So what we want to do at time point p minus 1 is find a motor command that will give us the best combination of cost per step and where it takes us. So there's a value associated with our command. It's going to take us to some location. But there's going to be this cost for performing this action. And what we want to do is to generate the command that minimizes this sum. And if we do that, then we will have found the best action to do at time point p minus 1. And the value for that state is going to be the sum of these guys. So the cost of where we end up if we take action u of p minus 1, because these are stochastic things, there's noise in it here, what we want to do is to basically find the expected value of where we're going to go, which is the probability of ending up in position x of p, given that we're at p minus 1, and perform the action p minus 1, times the value of that state under the policy. And so my value of the state xp minus 1 is my cost per step at that state plus this basically this integral, which is the expected value under the optimum policy of the state that I end up at given that I'm in state p minus 1 and have performed action p minus 1. So what this does, and, and I'll give you examples of this because it's, it probably is a little vague right now. It's not clear what I'm talking about. But what it's saying is that in order for you to know how good a particular state is at time point p minus 1, you need to look at the cost of actions at that state plus where does you know, where does it take you from this state? If you perform some input u, where is it going to take you? Well, the goodness of where it's going to take you is this value function at the next time point. So if it's closer to Cleveland, then that's good. It's brought you closer to where you want to go. It has a better value. How much did it cost you to take that step? That's here. And so to do the optimal action at time point p minus 1, what we want to do is to find the policy, find policy, pi star at x of p minus 1 that minimizes v of pi at time p minus 1. So what this means is that pi star 
at time point p minus 1 is the best command that you can produce in p minus 1 that minimize the sum of the cost per step plus where does it take you to? The expected value. And if you do perform the best motor command that you could give, then the value of your state at p minus 1 is this number. Which is basically alpha at time point p minus 1 evaluated at x p minus 1 and optimum command u star p minus 1 plus the expected value of where that command is going to take you given that you were at p minus 1 and you performed that optimum command. So I want to show you now an example of how we do this. And we'll do it without math. We'll do it as if we're playing a board game. And once we understand how to do the board game, I think you'll get an intuition of, um, I hope you'll get an intuition of how to do it using math. Um, on, your, um, on the website and also in the book chapter, you'll see examples of how to solve this for um, linear systems, but, but I want to I solve it for you for, for a different kind of problem to give, to give you a better, what I hope will be a better way to understand it. So suppose we have a game to play. And in this game, there are some positions on the board. And they look like this. And there's a wall here. What that means is that from any position, I could go to any neighbor, but I can't go from here to here. I can't go from here to here. So these are the positions. These are my states. So these are my states, x. And I can perform actions, u, and they can be, you know, they can move up, you can move sideways, you could move like this, you could move like this, you could move like this, or you could choose to do nothing, just stay still. So, all right, that's, that's, the, co that's the actions you can perform, that's the states that you are in, and cost per step is as follows. So there's going to be a cost alpha at time point k, and it's always going to be composed of two things, cost per state, Jx, and I'm going to have a cost per command, u. So Jx, what's Jx? That means that what's the cost that I'm going to incur if I'm at a particular location? And here's the cost that you're going to incur. So what I'm saying is that when you find yourself at any of these states, it's going to cost you five units except this state here, where it's going to cost you nothing. So this is your goal state. That's where you want to be, Cleveland. Everywhere else, it's going to cost you five units. Every time point that you're not at the goal state is going to cost you five units. If you were to move, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you one unit if you move. If you stay still, 
if you don't move. It won't cost you anything. So our problem is I need to know what to do at any time point at any state that I find myself at. And so I have, again, P time points. So finite horizon is P, which means that I need you to tell me what to do at time point P at every state, what to do at time point P minus 1 at every state, at time point P minus 2 at every state. So you need to find the best policy, which means the best action for every state at every time point. That's the optimal control problem. OK? OK. And so we'll use the Bellman equation, these equations that I've been writing you, writing for you, to solve this problem. And we're going to find the value function for every state. We're going to find the best action for every state at every time point. And we'll see, we'll see how that works out. But before I start, do you have any questions? What the problem is that we're trying to solve? So what you'll see is that there will be states where the best action is to move. And there will be times where, for those states, the best action is to do nothing. And the objective is to find a sequence of actions for every state that makes it so that if you find yourself at any particular location at any particular time, you know what to do from then on in order to have the least cost at time point P, sum of alpha K. So you want to minimize the sum of alpha K. All right. So Let's begin at the, uh, basically, our final time point. So at time point P. What we want to know is what to do with every state. So we have these, um, how many states do we have? 12 states. And for every one of them, we want to know what is the best thing to do. Well, you know, our, our cost is, is this. At every state, it's going to cost us something. And every action is going to cost us something. So this is the final state, the final time point. And at the final time point, you know, I've run out of time, basically. So if I'm at this state, I should do nothing. This state, I should do nothing. And all of these states. Because I've run out of time, the best action that I can do, u at time point p, should do nothing. And if that was the case, if this, is, if this is the best thing that I have, then the value under the optimum policy at x of p is going to be what? Alpha? at time point P, here it is, which in this case is going to be this. If I do nothing, I just have the cost of my state. So for every state, I have a value. And if I didn't do anything when I was at time point P, this is how much it's going to cost me. So that's the value function under the optimum policy, this is as small of a number as I can have here in any one of these states at time point P. Yeah? Why would UP be the state of not moving instead of a non-existent U? Well, in this case, you pick a U that minimizes this value at every location. And that happens to be zero, right? Because if I did nothing, then I just have a cost of the state. Does that make sense? OK. So it, it depends on your problem, of course. But in this case, 
In most cases, if, there, if you have a dynamical system, the action that you do, the consequences are not at that current time. It's at some future time. So you might as well do nothing. All right. So we have the value for every state under the optimum policy, which optimum policy was zero to do nothing. So that all I have this co is the cost of the state, x itself, which is this. All right. So let's go to time point p minus 1. All right, so our, our, our Bellman equation says that the optimum policy at state x at time point p minus 1 is the 1 u that minimizes the cost per step at that time plus the value under the optimum policy at state x of p given that you were at p minus 1 and you did action u p minus 1. So this value is this. Here it is. Here's that function. It says well, if you ended up here, here's how much it's going to cost you, 5. And then you have to add that to the cost that you had for that step itself. So we're going to find this guy and then we're going to say, if I perform some action, where is it going to take me? How good is that future state? And I'm going to add those two together. I'm going to say, what's the best action that I can do in p minus 1? So let's pick a state. Pick top middle state. So pick this state here. This is what I'm interested in, this state. What should I do here? If I'm here at time point p minus 1, what's the best thing that I can do? Well, let's consider some actions. So if I, so what, what if I move down? If that's, that's what I do at time point p minus, if I'm here, and if I move down, what, what, what does that mean? How much is that going to cost me? Well, then alpha at time point p minus 1, cost per step, is the cost for that state. So here cost for being here at any time is 5. Plus I took a movement, I did something, 1. This is Jx, this is Ju, so that is 6. Well, where did it take me? What's the value of the state that it took me? It took me here, this term here. I was at this location, I was at this location, it cost me 5, I made a movement down to here, that cost me 1, it took me to a state that has value 0. So that says that where I'm going, given that I was at p minus 1 and I performed this action, that is 0. So all right. So that means that the sum of these two, 6 plus 0, v of the state that I go to, if I'm at this state and I perform this action, the total value is 6. What if I perform a movement to the right? Well, my cost per step is my initial cost. What's the cost of that state that I'm in is 5. The action that I perform is 1, so this is 6. The value of the state that I end up at, given that where I was, and I performed this movement, that is 5. I move to the right. So the value of my state, given that I if I move to the right, is 5 plus 6, which is 11. What if I do nothing? Then my cost per step is the cost of my state, 5, plus no action, 0. That's 5. Where do I end up? I end up where I started from, which is 5. The sum of those two If I do nothing, is 10. 
So, our best policy is the action that minimizes the sum of cost per step plus the value of the state that you end up at. So, among the various actions that I can take, this is going to be the best action. So, what that says is that at time point, P minus 1, for this state, the best action is this. So you can do the same thing for these guys, and obviously it will turn out the same for these guys. This is going to be the best action for these guys. But what is it for these guys? All right, let's do it. Let's do it for for this this state here. Let's do it for this state. All right. So if you find yourself at this state, you can make a movement. Say you know you um, you make a movement this way. Suppose this is a movement you make. If at bottom right state we move like this. All right, so, I have a co so my cost at that time point is going to be 5 because I'm at this state, right? So look at this. Cost at that time point, at any time point, the cost of being at that state is 5. So I have a 5 for being in this state, plus I make a movement, 1, so that's going to cost me 6. Where does it take me? It takes me here. At time point P, the value of that state that I'm going to is 5. So I get another so value at x of P, given that I was at P minus 1, and I made a movement like this, that's 5. So if I were to then, my value under the policy of x of P, under the being at xp minus 1 and performing the action this way, it's going to be 11. So that's if I move this way. What if I do nothing? So then my cost is going to be just the cost of being in that state 5. And then what's going to happen is that I'm going to stay here. Well, what's the value of that state? if I were to not move, is 5. So then the value of this state, given that I'm at x of p minus 1 and I did nothing, that's 5. So you see that if I did nothing, the value of x of p minus 1 on, with this action is 10. That's better. So therefore, my best policy here is to do nothing. You're too far away from Cleveland. Give up. All right, that's going to be the same here. So at p minus 1, you will only move if you're one step away. Otherwise, you stay where you are. It's known. So that's what makes it finite horizon. For this P, here's the action. And so if you don't know the horizon, if you don't know P, what you do is that you solve it for each P. So you say, suppose P is 10 steps. Let's solve it for that. Let's do it for 11 steps. Let's do it for 12 steps. And then your problem will be such that there will be a minimum cost among those P's. You just search the p-space, basically. All right. Any questions so far? All right. Let's solve it for p minus 2. So again, you have to tell me what's the best policy at each state.
What's the best action that I have to do, what I can do at each state? All right, so let's begin with this state here. Top right state. Tell me the best action here. So my cost for that step, for that state, is 5 plus, if I move, it's 1. So that's 6. Well, what's the best place that I can move? You can kind of guess, well, maybe this is the best action that I can do. So that's the value under the optimum policy at p minus 1, given that I'm at p minus 2, and I perform an action like this. If I do that, I'm going to get to a state that has value 0. I didn't, sorry, I, I need to do it here. I, I forgot to do it here. I, I, I missed something. So we computed, val we computed uh, actions for every state. We also need to know the value under the optimum policy at every state. So, all right, let's, let's um, I forgot to do that. So it's going to be, um, we, we did our first one, which was at the bottom right state. We moved like this. We moved like this. Sorry. We, we did this, and we found that it, was, it, it gave us a value of 11. But if we stayed, we got a value of 10. So, so but for the value of this state, under the optimum policy is 10. It turns out that's also the value for this state, and the value for this state, and the value for this state, and this, and this. Basically, do nothing. So why is it 10? Because you have this step, you're going to do nothing. And the next step, you're going to do nothing, which means that you're going to have a cost of two states in a row. You're going to have 10. So all I did is just take this 10 here, which is what I computed under the optimum policy, and I said that's the value of this state. Well, if you're here and you move to the new location, you're going to have a value of 6. If you're here and you move to the best location, you have a value of 6. 6 here, 6 here, 6 here, 0 here. Shouldn't it be 5? No, uh, because you have to move once. That's So, OK, what is the value function? The value function is the sum of the cost per step, which is the state that you're in, plus the action you took. That's 6. Plus, where does it take you? What's the value of that? The value of that, so if I'm here, I meant five where you have zero right now, because there's a time step. Yeah, so there's never, if I stay here and do nothing, I never accrue any cost. Does that make sense? So I neither have a state cost nor an action cost. OK, so I computed the action for every step, for every state at this step, and I computed the value for that state. And that value is the cost per step plus the value of the next state. So here's the value function for the final state. Here's the value function for state p minus, for time point p minus 1 under the optimum policy. So it's, it's a scalar function that says how good is this place you're at if you were to do the very best thing you could from now on. And why do we need that? Because to compute what to do at time point p minus 2, I need to know how good is the state that it's going to take me this action. And that's the value function for that state. So let's do it. Let's so you can see. All right, so I'm time point p minus 2. And I'm at the top right state. I'm here. So if I'm here, then I'm going to have a cost per step of 5. That's the cost of my state, plus 1, because I move. That's going to be 6. Where does it take me to? This guy. If it takes me here, the value of that state at time point p minus 1 is 0 here. So the sum of this is the value of 
x at p minus 2 with the action of this, and that's 6. And this turns out to be the best action that I can make. Of all the actions that I can make, moving down, moving left, moving right, sorry, moving down, moving left, moving sideways, the best action is this because it takes me to a state that has zero cost, and therefore the sum of these guys gives me a 6. So the best action is this, and the value under the optimum policy at x at time point p minus 2 for this state is going to be 6. It's going to be similar for this state. It's going to be 0 here, this state, this state, and this state. All right. Let's now do it for bottom right state. All right, down here. So I want to know what's the action, best action for this guy here. So if I move, then my cost per step is going to be the cost of the being at that state, 5, plus the action is 1. That's a 6. So I'm here. Where do I move to? Well, I'm going to move up or I'm going to move sideways. Either of those are going to take me to a location that's going to cost me six points. So the best that I can do twelve. So this is this is if I move. And and I claim that's the best you can do. So if you don't move what's gonna happen? So if you don't move, your cost per step is 5. The value of where you're starting at, if you were to just stay where you are, is 10. That's the cost if you were to stay where you are. So the total is Fifteen. So, it's a better policy to move. At time point p minus 2, it's good to move. Whereas in time point p minus 1, it's too late. And we can do the same for these other states. So the best action here is this, or this, it's the same. And this is the best action here. But what about this guy here? Let's, let's look at this guy up here. Top left state. All right. So for these guys, this is going to be a 12. This is going to be a 12. So now I want to know what's, what's the best action if I'm up here. Well, I'm going to have a cost. For that being in that state, 5, plus I'm, suppose I move, 1. So that's a 6. Well, where am I going to go to? I'm going to go to the next state. And the value of that state is 10. I'm going to get to here. So the sum. is this is going to be 16. But if I stay, then alpha of p minus 2 is just going to be 5. And the cost of my staying at the state that I will end up is 10. I'm just going to stay where I am. And so the sum is 
the value of state p minus 2 and the action of nothing is 15. So that's better, which means my best action here is to do nothing, to do nothing, to do nothing. And if that were the case, then the value of these states will be 15. So this unfolds the problem. What you have is that you end up with a value function that tells you how good every state is at every time point. Assuming that you perform the very best actions from then on. So what we're doing is that we begin at the end. We say we have run out of time. We can always solve the problem if we run out of time, because it's just a simple equation that says minimize the cost per step. We find the best action. Then we say, if we, if we find the best action at the last time point, what's the value of the state that we're in? We've assigned the value. Next, we move a step back. We say, all right, we got some other state. What's the best action that we can perform? Well, that's the cost per step given our current state, plus where does it take us to? That's the value of the state in the future. And then we do it again. And this unfolds the problem. So for example, look, the fact that I have 15 here, what this means is that this is the cost that I'm going to incur under the optimum policy for the three steps, p minus 2, p minus 1, and p if I do the best thing possible, which in this case would be nothing. So this is the minimum cost that I'm going to incur under the optimum policy, 15. Optimum policy being three actions of doing nothing. 12 is one action of doing, two actions of doing nothing, and one action of doing something, and so forth. So the value function is going to give you the minimum cost that you could incur at any given time point if you were to, from now on, to do the best possible. All right, so let me stop for a second and see if you have any questions. OK, so we have a cost per step. We stay at, start at the end of the problem. We find the commands that minimize that cost. Then we say, if you were to produce those commands, what's the value? And the value would be the cost per step under the optimum policy. Then we've assigned the value to every state. Then we step back and we do it again. Now, when we have a dynamical system where there is noise, so here we didn't have any noise, right? So you performed an action and you moved to a state. Well, in a real world, you're going to have noise. You're going to have uncertainty about where you end up. In that case, you don't take the value, you take the expected value of the value of the states. So you could go many places, but there's some probability with all of those places. And what you do is you say, okay, what's the average, basically, of where I can end up? And what's the value of that? And that's what we did when we looked at, when I wrote down this equation here. See, it's the expected value of the value of the state that I'm going to end up at. That's the stochasticity that's going to give us. Yeah? So in the example that you went over, um, this is the bottom right corner that had two potential right. or tie. Yeah. So in this case, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. No. But if you had a, a situation where you have like infinite states, Right. So you, you, you have an expected value that you use. Um, but in this case, it doesn't matter. OK? So I hope that was pretty clear. If you can understand this, which is a fairly you know, intricate ideas, I think uh, you're on your way. All right, guys. I'll see you Thursday. <laughs>